tryna change the channel Crash landing in my soft spot for you got me sir Alright, um, I put out the question a few days ago What is your opinion of the scene as a whole? Uh, and we had a bunch of responses And it's very interesting to see the mix of responses that we got uh, And here's uh, some of my thoughts on those comments The scene is more diverse than ever I was around in the early 2000s And I can safely say there was no one like chilling it Or Wombat, one for Nerve, Husky, Trip One, etc, etc Back then most people were uh, familiar to the Hilltop Hoods and Funkors, Funkars, uh, I apologize uh, for not pronouncing that name right, uh, because they were the only ones making music that you could easily access. There were guys like uh, 1200 Techniques and Cat Empire who were on a different vibe, Earthboy, TZU, Muffin Platonic, etc. would be in a bit different, but not like today where there is no singular sound of Aussie hip hop. I would mostly agree with this, you know, I think there's a wide variety of genres coming out of Australia and specifically uh, quite a few different sub-genres of hip-hop uh, being produced in Australia. Um, I definitely think that there is a diverse scene depending on what you like, depends on you know where you're going to go and kind of what you get if you're like me and kind of enjoy a bit of everything. Uh, you can you know pick and choose the artists you like from those sub-genres and you can kind of take that in. If you only like boom bap then there's that lane for you. If you only like kind of trap and melodic rap then there's that lane for you. If you kind of only like drill and grime then there's that lane for you like there's plenty of different areas that we can go to especially within the different subgenres. um only thing i would say is there's no singular sound of aussie hip-hop or despite there being a mix of subgenres or uh, in australia does that mean that it's aussie hip-hop i mean the drill that we have is it aussie drill or is it english uk inspired aussie drill is it inspired from other cultures? Now, I mean, I guess you could ultimately say that everything is inspired from something previous to it and everything has kind of a, a snowball effect or everything kind of derives from something. So I guess that's kind of a, a weird thing to say, but I, I don't know, that's a question to you, man. But realistically, I think that, yeah, I'd say there's a wide array of music and yeah, and I think as time moves on, there will continue to be a even bigger pool of music to listen to. I think we're tired of hearing about drilling for postcodes when kids are dying because it's glorified every other week. I'm hoping 1-4 will lead the charge on this in their next project. Um, I disagree with this comment, but not entirely. But th th let me point out the things I do disagree with. Drilling and street life and, you know, all of this stuff. Yes, it is glorified. But it's not like it's only glorified within postcode drill in Australia. Like, it's been glorified and it has been a talking subject throughout hip-hop since it starts. You know, it's been a thing that people have talked about. And yes, it's become more of a popular thing now, but that doesn't mean that it's all of a sudden started now. The bit where I massively disagree with is, yes, there are kids when we say kids like let's say under 18s uh, or let's say young adults at the very least there are kids dying every other week it's happening on a daily basis and some of it may be linked to music in some way shape or form but we can't pretend like it only started in the last couple years since aussie drill become a thing is one four are not the reason why there's crime happening one four are not the reason why there are people out here uh idolizing a certain lifestyle that may not be healthy for them what about film what about tv what about gaming what about lots of other things that we take in terms of media we can't only put that down to hip-hop we can't only put that down to gaming we can't only put that down to film i've taken in violent film growing up i've taken in violent gaming i've taken in violent music growing up am i out here doing any of that no i would say music has had a positive positive effect on me because I have listened to people who have more of a positive message. Now, equally, I can listen to one four, put that still in the bad man's chest and pray to the Lord that he don't survive. I can't pretend like I didn't screw up my face and jump around to that lyric. That excited me. I enjoyed that bit of ignorance. I enjoyed that moment of ignorance. That's maybe a form of escapism for me. Maybe I like it because of how real it is. That doesn't necessarily mean I always agree with what's being said. What? You grew up listening to Eminem, 50 Cent, maybe even a Jay-Z. They're not the worst of the worst, but they're not the best of the best either in terms of the subject matter that they're talking about. And at the end of the day, just because you listen to those artists doesn't mean you go and sell drugs or go and do this or go and do... 
not necessarily. Now, of course, there are some people that may be influenced by that, but I don't think you can put that solely on music. Now, that's a whole nother discussion that we've kind of dipped our toes in there, but cool. That's my kind of brief thoughts on it. Um, hoping one four will lead the charge on this in their next project. It would be nice for them to talk about these things, and they have briefly talked about these things. You know, they've done Welcome to Prison, they've done Home and Away, they've done these kind of things where they talk at least about the balance and the repercussions of certain things, and it would be nice for them to continue doing that. I also want them to do that ignorant shit as well. Like, yes, I do want a balance. Um, the bit where I partly agree is the postcode thing. Like, yeah, I'm bored of hearing postcode wars because you're warring over fucking nothing. But it, we can't pretend like that's the only thing going on right now in Australia. Linking back to our first comment, there is a wide variety of music and it isn't just drill coming out. I do think that that's kind of risen and it's not completely fallen off, but I don't think that is the most popular thing to do right now, in my opinion. The scene is very diverse currently with a lot of different sounds and new artists emerging over the last couple years. I feel that COVID and lockdowns have really slowed down the progress of a lot of these artists with being unable to tour and even get their name out there by being support acts hurting their ability to reach new audiences. Uh, I massively, massively agree with this. I do think that the scene is very diverse and I do think there's a lot of emerging artists over the last couple of years, 100%. Uh, I do believe that COVID has slowed down progress of nearly everyone. Um, I think some people have used it to their advantage in some way, shape or form. And some people have done some really cool niche things off the back of it. Seth Sentry being an example of one of them. Um, but I do believe that it slowed down the progress of a lot of people because of touring and things like that. Now, let's look at the snowball effect, right? If you're an artist and you're not able to go and tour, that means you're not able to then make money, which potentially means that you've got to stay in your nine to five job, which then prevents you from putting out more music, which then may prevent you from growing a bigger audience. Now, you can see how we've gone from the end and if we work that back, that can come from just not being able to perform or not being able to put out music. People who are under labels having to hold out on filming videos or just releases in general because labels are saying like, no, 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 you're not meant to be filming right now. You're not meant to be releasing. You're not meant to be doing shows. There are some artists that are not able to release music right now because uh, labels are holding them and waiting for uh, COVID to clear up as a whole so they can go and do their tour shortly after. And so, yes, certain people are being held back and, and underground artists, yep, although they can release whenever they want, maybe they've blown up in that COVID period and they've not been able to go and perform that smash hit that dropped in that time. Think about how many bangers have dropped in the last year and a half to two years that we haven't heard performed or you've only recently heard perform, heard perform for the first time. Like, I think that has hurt a lot of artists, but I think that the ones who can prevail out the other side of that, it's meant to be. I think that's a destiny thing. And I guess you could argue it's prevented some of the one hit wonders from really doing that thing. But ultimately, man, everyone needs to go earn their bread, man. If, you, if you've had a song that pops, go and eat off of that, man. Why not? I'm not even going to be a hater on that front. But yeah, I do agree that it has held back many, many people. Oh, I've only read this now. And this links back to our second comment from earlier. Same as it's always been. Sure, the sounds are evolving, but the subject matter stays the same. There's always been artists who rap about violence, glorify drugs, or can paint a picture. At the end of the day, music is art and art is an expression of emotion and the environment people grow up in. I just listen to what I can relate to, whatever hits home. If it happens to have a dope beat, that's a bonus. I really like this comment about, you know, uh, the sounds are always evolving. Things, you know, are always moving forward. And no matter what we can uh, look back at with nostalgia and say, that's what real Aussie hip hop is. There's going to be a generation now that look back at the music that we're listening to right now in 10, 15, 20 years time and go, that's what real Aussie music was. And the same thing's going to keep happening. How often do we find ourselves going, the younger generation are fucked? And the generation above you that is watching this right now looked at your generation and said, that generation is fucked. Why? Because you grow up with loads of things that you're not used to. I look at the generation, let's say, 10 years below me now. So let's say 13-year-olds. And I say, but they don't have the things that I had growing up. Yeah, but if we had the same shit that they had growing up, then we would have done the same things. That's ultimately the truth, you know? Parenting has changed. Teaching has changed. What we media we consume has changed. So, of course, growing up, we are different. So, either way, that's that. 
Again, I'm going on, on, a, on a different subject there. But staying to this one, there have always been artists that rap about violence, glorified drugs, paint and picture. 100% it's always been happening. You know, how how that's presented in terms of uh, musically has changed, but the subject matter has always been the same. Uh, and, and if it's an art, it's an expression of emotion and the environment you grow up in, of course, you're talking about what you've seen. If you are a real one, you are going to talk about the things you have genuinely lived through. You know, me, I haven't genuinely been in certain situations situations but i may talk about them in my music for the simple fact that i've seen these things happen you know i may have not been there firsthand but maybe second and maybe third hand people telling their stories you know hearing the stories of people growing up of where's my man oh this happened to him so i still think it's a relevant story for me to tell within my music yes of course the perspective and the and 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 whether you're talking first hand or second hand accounts and whatnot do change but i do think it's relevant to tell these stories completes newest drop uh one slice is a great example of that you know talking about the things that he's seen or maybe even if it is more of a generic story it is very relevant to the times and the place that he has grown up in um so i think that things like that are very very useful to have and very very good to have and i and again when you're talking about things that hit home of course if you've grown up in these environments you you know what i mean you're talking to those people if you're an artist realistically you're talking to the people that are like you and if you do want to aim for that radio audience and go mainstream there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do that's what you want to do but i believe it's all about the art and you know that whole cliche speech of doing it for my people and doing it for my area and i think ultimately that is the thing that is you can still be massive and do that look at one four as the example all i can say is the scene is about to change with husky's new drop and it's needed been stuck on the same way for two or three years now a change is coming uh, i think the change is happening right now underneath our noses as we speak um, I have seen a huge rise in boom bap music again and go into the more traditional roots of hip hop. Um, you've seen it in Scrubs Project, you've seen it with Posse Shot, we're seeing it with these kind of artists and it's been really nice to see. And I do believe that it's going to be more rap based uh, than it will be drill or maybe even melodic. Now, that there's still going to be drill artists coming through and there's still going to be melodic artists coming through. There is no denying that. And I'm not saying that they're dying or anything like that. But I think the newest trend this year will be real rap. Kind of that Husky, Flo's De Leone type style rap. I really do believe that that's going to be the new thing that's pushing through. You probably just heard my alarm go off there. So I'm going to end on this comment here. It is what it is. If we want to see it go a certain way, we need to be showing love to the artist that are doing the things that we like. Follow their socials, like their stuff, comment on their stuff to help give them the platform to mold the future. I know not everyone has the funds, but when they release albums, merch, etc., buy that stuff. If you can, every little bit helps to show an artist that they can do it. I talked about this recently on the um, on the Scrub live stream. I thought it was a fantastic project, uh, project Gummo. Um, go and check that and, that and that's an example i think that people should be using their their social media platforms i think people should be using word of mouth i think people if they can be buying the, for hard copies of the albums getting the merch going to the shows going to the shows is one of the biggest things people honestly like do what you can and if it ain't money based fair enough i understand just just like the video just comment just do something, but please, for the artists that you really like, please go and show them love. Like, pick pick an artist you've been listening to in the last week. Just go and at them on Instagram and just tag one of their songs and just be like, yo, love this track. Like, go and go on to one of your favorite throwback tracks and just go comment, still listening to it in 2022. Like, I know it seems generic. I know it seems like you're asking for likes. It's not. It's genuinely supporting these artists. Please go and do those small things because those small things do add up. And no, comments aren't going to pay the bills. But at the end of the day, if you can't financially support that artist, do something to give them the exposure for the artist to help su support themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, like please do go and support these artists because yes, Australia is still 10 times smaller than the UK and the UK is still 10 times smaller than America. Like it is true. We are a tiny, tiny drop in the ocean when it comes to the music industry worldwide. And not everything has to be industry based. Not everything has to be commercial and everything like that. But for the ones who can make genuine music and go commercial, we need to support it. If you dislike people who make commercial sound and music to blow, you need to continue supporting the underground stuff. Make the underground sound the popular thing.
Does that make sense? We've had that in the UK now where it's kind of in this distorted world, but there was this blissful period, I feel, where you could make whatever music you wanted and blow. And I mean, you could argue that is still now. You know, you're getting the likes of Russ and T on Wayne's going number one in the charts with a drill track. Like, it's still a thing, don't get me wrong. But there's a lot of people that are looking for commercial heights and whatnot. But I think if you, man, really want to avoid that, you need to support what you like. Like, even if that is a commercial sound, let me make that very clear one last time. There is nothing wrong with trying to make commercial music. But if you want that commercial sound to change as a whole, I think you need to be supporting the music that you genuinely enjoy. Make that music that you enjoy, number one. You enjoy Chill? Go and stream that album. You enjoy Husky's new album when it drops? Go and stream it. Go and buy it if you can. If not, at least just spread the word. Because the amount of times I mention an artist or an album or even a song and people go, yo, I never heard of this before. Now I like it. You, man, can do exactly the same. I'm telling you. So regardless people really interesting to see all of the comments uh, underneath the post thank you so much for all of the posts i wish i had more time to just get around to all of them but yeah honestly really do appreciate it um i'll be doing more discussions like this so follow me on instagram or sub on youtube and you'll see the community post here or the question uh, story post on instagram when i do these discussion type videos are there any discussions that you want me to do in the near future let me know as well and i've actually plugged my socials for once in the world once in, in, in the life, but I still don't know how to outro a video properly.